Hey, what's up, guys? I'm going to be looking at the Fall su Super Drop uh, Secret Layer products, and then I'm going to be showing you how much they're worth uh, and helping evaluate whether or not you should buy them. However, this is all my opinion, and I'm not going to be over going over the one that's just basic lands, as I personally would not pick up any Secret Layer that's just basic lands, unless that's your jam. I'm not going to judge, but it's not my thing. So starting off, we have the Kev Walker Secret Layer. Comes with Flesh Bag, Faberow Elder, It That Betrays, and Carnage Tyrant. Uh, I think the It That Betrays artwork is really good. I enjoy Kev's Atraxa. Uh, however, if we go and we look at the cards in this set, uh, it comes out to about $16, uh, going from the lowest printing. Faberow Elder is a very, very good um, Mandork. Fleshberg Marauder is good for sack decks. Carnage Tyrant, I think, is kind of a scarcity thing. Because if you look at it, while well, it can't be countered and hexproof are pretty good, something like uh, Elder Gargaroth is just generally going to be better. It's a 5-mana 6-6 six, six Vigilance for each Trample, and either draws you cards, create tokens, or gains you life. Whereas this is just Trample Hexproof. So, um, and then If That Betrays, while well, very powerful, and you could cheat it out, it kind of has the same ability as Teragrid, but for 7 mana more. And Teragrid also benefits off of your opponent discarding cards. It's hard to get into the battlefield unless it's cheated. Um, it was a lot more expensive, however, I think this is a very specific card, and you can't just throw it into any deck, uh, which I would say would mean I'm probably not going to be picking up this secret layer. I think while the art is pretty cool, um, the cards themselves aren't worth that much, and I don't really see uh, me playing any of these over what already exists. Um, moving on, this one is Bugs. So, if you like that style of art, I know they've done something similar before. Uh, it is very cool, it's very trippy. Uh, the cards in this, however, are... Not terrible. It comes out to about $21. So, Gris the Hunger Tide. It can be your commander. Keep in mind, because it's a 1-1 outside of the battlefield. So, it counts as a creature. Which is pretty cool. Um, it's overall okay. I know it sees some, I think, either modern or legacy play. I'm not really sure. I don't keep up as much in those formats. Uh, but it's definitely okay. Uh, Mazarek is a go-wide sacrifice commander. It's very strong, um, and I think it's definitely a pickup either way. Uh, Giant Adiphage used to see more play, however, it is very slow. And a 7-mana seven 7-7, seven, seven, even if it duplicates itself, it, it takes a while. Um, Noxious Revival is very strong. You can bring back the cards you need, uh, bring back combo pieces, or... If your opponent has discarded something they don't need, because uh, it's like a brick in their hand, you can send it back to the top of their deck so that they're forced to brick again. Um, Eldritch Evolutions, on the other hand, I would say is a very powerful card. I might pick it up just for this. It's a creature tutor, somewhat similar to Birthing Pod. Um, However, it is going to be somewhat specific with what you're grabbing. You need to have a sacrifice uh, creature to begin with, so it's really dependent on the deck, but it's a lot stronger than some of the other cards on these lists. Uh, for a market value of about $21, I think the cards are definitely going to hold their value. Um, personally, outside of like Eldritch Evolution and the Grist card, not really my style, so I don't think I'm going to be picking this one up. But if that's your sort of thing, I would say go for it, because it's not the worst value. I think this one, it was something to do with being in a band. So they're all very metal. Uh, you got Tevish Zot, uh, Jessica, Thrice Reborn, Vile Smasher, and uh, Goto Bandit Warlord. So looking at that... You can pick up Jessica, Tevish, Vile Smasher, and Goto for about $15. As you can tell, the price on a lot of these isn't really holding up. Uh, Jessica and Tevish can both be your commanders, and then all of them except for Goto have partner, so that you can have two of them as your commander. 
Um, so Jessica triples uh, damage that w one of your creatures would deal to a player, and her other ability um, is able to burn three targets. So it's okay. However, I feel like she's very specific. You're not going to throw her into like the into the 99 too often. Uh Tevish set 5 mana planeswalker kind of hurts. Um his thralls can protect him, which is good. He can make your opponents uh oh, well, you gain control of their commanders. It's he's okay. However, planeswalkers never stick around in commander. So I think he's going to have that exact same problem. Um, Vile Smasher is a classic, very strong commander. Uh, whenever you cast your first spell each turn, choose an opponent uh, at random, and it deals damage equal to the spell's converted mana cost to that player. Use cards like Shadow of Mortality or uh, anything with Delve to reduce, reduce their costs. So you're casting a spell for like two or three, but Vile Smasher sees it as like seven. Uh, Sakashima, uh, can be another good partner with Vile Smasher, um, and then Goto searches for an equipment and puts it on the battlefield, um, which is very strong, I can say, uh, it goes infinite with, um, what's it called, uh, Helm of the Host, which it can also search for. And whenever it attacks, you untap it and all samurai, and there's an additional combat phase. That's how it goes infinite, because you, you, you tap it to attack. It has Helm of the Host, creates an additional copy that also attacks, creates another combat, and it just keeps going. So, it's very strong. However, I don't quite see what it's doing in this set, unless it's just the fact that it's banned uh i i don't really get it um i don't think i'm going to be picking up this one either i already own all the other cards in this set i have a vile smasher so that's personally me and the art just doesn't appeal to me i think the jessica and the tevish is out are cool uh but the vile smasher is a little too cartoony for my taste and goto i'm just not my i'm not a fan of however this isn't a terrible secret layer to pick up uh, especially if you want cool commanders to play around with. Um, next up, Fall Super Drop 22 to Baseball Cards. So I don't quite understand, like, looking at it, right? I don't think their abilities are on the back. You just have to know their abilities. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm not really a baseball fan, but I think they're definitely interesting. Um... Looking at the value of the cards, there we go. It comes out to about $14, which isn't anything special. However, if you do consider Jace was just reprinted in Commander Masters and was like two or three bucks beforehand, so it's probably closer to 17 if he bounces back up. Um, looking at this in the Commander lens, Jace isn't a very good Planeswalker in Commander, that milling 20 is never going to happen and or doesn't really make an impact. And in general, you don't want your opponents to be drawing cards outside of like Nekusar. So he's not great. A Johnny, he's okay. Um, definitely putting a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control can be strong. And since they gain vigilance, they'll be able to protect a Johnny on the following turns. So that's not terrible. Uh, however, it's ultimate creating a Sarah avatar is just, it's meh. Um, Grook, the wild speaker. So this one is going to be closer to like f four or $5. It's just the, uh, dual decks one that is cheaper. Um, in general, I think he's okay. However, I think you're better just playing like overrun not overrun um uh let's let's check yeah overwhelming stampede so that gives 
uh, creatures you control trample and plus X plus X, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. This is plus three plus three in trample, and you have to pr protect Garouk for a turn. And it's one mana less, but you're going to get so much more value out of Overwhelming Stampede. I mean, sure, he can untap two lands, but unless you're in a deck that's playing something like Coffers or, you know, something where lands really matter, I don't think it's worth it. Um, Chandra Nalar is okay, however, in the Commander lens, really not great. Because one damage to target player isn't a lot. Um, and then even the ultimate 10 damage to target player, sure, that's 25% of their life. But 25% of their life isn't a lot. Um, so, definitely not really a commander pickup. Liliana Vess, on the other hand, very strong. It makes opponents discard cards. It can tutor. Uh, and she can put all creatures from all graveyards onto the battlefield if you're able to keep her long enough. However, generally, you're going to use that tutor ability. You can make opponents discard. Um, I think she's probably the most valuable card in the uh, set. However, $14, I wouldn't say this is worth it for a commander player. However, if you like the arts, which I actually really... I think these arts are really cool... They have a lot of character. Um, I, for some reason, Chandra's giving me, like, fallout e vibes. I don't know why. Uh, like, that 50s Fallout style. But uh, either way, they're very cool. Um, but I'm probably not going to be picking them up. Next up is... I think it was something metal. So, looking at the cards... Yep. Okay. Um... It comes out to about $20, which is, I think, the second highest so far. However, it's really mass hysteria and oppression keeping it up. I mean, a Braid and Terminate are very cheap. They're good removal spells, but in general, you'd probably be better getting a cheaper printing. Or, in my case, I own a proxy Terminate that has, uh, like, the, like, Terminator, like, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger on it. And he's just, like... Um, I, I'd prefer just getting another proxy over, like, it's cool, but I, I can't entirely tell what's going on. Um, I think the impression, oppression, sorry, the oppression's pretty cool, and the mass, mass hysteria is pretty cool. Uh, a braid's not bad either, uh, but I wouldn't say it's overall worth it. I mean, mass hysteria is a one mana red enchantment that gives all creatures haste including your opponents so sometimes this really isn't helpful for you and it's very deck dependent um and then oppression was higher it just got reprinted in uh enchanting tales and i feel like once wilds of Eldrain gets circulated its price is going to go down to closer to like six bucks probably so overall i don't think it's going to be worth it i think if oppression goes down, it's going to come down to like 18 bucks. Um, and I personally would not pick this one up either. Uh, this one and the fast one, last one on the list. Hold on. This one's crazy. Some of these cards you probably own anyway. But the art, this rampant growth is fine. The first sliver is sick. This food chain is really cool. And then Rewind just looks sick. Um, so looking at these cards, this is the one to pick up. I think you should pick up at least two of these. Maybe three. Because resale value is going to be crazy. Okay, this market's at $71. 71 is a lot. And look at this. First sliver printed, it's about 53 60 bucks. Rewind, okay, not as great. However, it's a solid counter spell that I think a lot of decks could use. I, I would say it's very good in Commander. Uh, Rampant Growth is a Commander staple. There's no reason not to have one, and you might as well have a nice-looking one, which, as it being a staple, sure, it's going to be reprinted more, but people are going to want to get their hands 
on the cool looking copy. They're not going to want the same rampant growth, uh, rampant growth that everybody has. Like, look, you got the one special copy from Double Masters. It's a common and it's worth a dollar. So because it's special and because it's a staple, I think it's going to hold value. And then Food Chain is a very strong card. It goes for 17, 18 bucks. Um, and again, the art is sick. I think definitely, even if it doesn't hold its value as well, I think it'll still be worth $50 total within the coming time. Um, and then if you look at... If you look at Sliver Legion, it's a $50 card. Got a secret layer reprint that's like 35 bucks. So just, just think about that. That's about what the first sliver is. So you're going to be keeping it around 35 bucks, I'm assuming, which is a great trade off. Um, I think the food chain will probably keep around what it is being like 18. Um, I think the rampant growth will end up being like five or six bucks and the rewind will be like a dollar or two. Either way, I think it's at least going to be worth 50 within the next year, if not more. This is the one I'm buying. Um, but let me know in the comments if there's something I missed. And who knows? Maybe, you know, you're going to get something like the baseball one. And then, oh, they just happen to throw in for the bonus card a, uh, you know, like a, uh, oh, Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Wow, that's crazy. You're like, ooh, t uh, t Fairy just happens to be the extra card. And then it goes from $16 value to 45 and then... All of this was meaningless, but I think that's about where the different uh, players are going to stand. Uh, but pick up what you think is cool, okay? Don't listen to my opinion. Some of them aren't worth it as much financially, but in general, they're still going to be worth something. So let me know in the comments what you're picking up, and uh, see you later.